On day one, I spawn in as a baby fire scorpion. I also have this cool ability that lets me set blocks on fire. But wait a minute, where's my family? I didn't have time to think though, as suddenly a massive Zoglim started charging at me. Let's see just how strong I am. I charged at the mob, lighting it on fire and hitting it with my fist. But my attacks didn't seem to hurt it at all. Uh oh. The Zoglim then charged at me, knocking me against a wall, leaving me with just one heart. It started powering up one last hit, and I closed my eyes as I knew it was over. Go help him out, son. I opened my eyes to see the Zoglin being fought by another bigger fire scorpion, and it wasn't long until it was killed. That was awesome! Thanks so much for saving me! Silio, you and your brother Sting have to stick together out in the wild. We have to hide from that dreadful ghost pirate. Yes, Silio, we're a team, remember? No more losing each other out here. Now let's head home. We just finished building your room. Sting and my dad guided me home, and as we made it closer, I saw loads of other fire creatures happily coexisting in a small village. Now, it's been a long day, boys. Go get some rest. Tomorrow, we'll work on another portal and figure out how to track down that ghost pirate and take him out for good. I woke up on day two to Sting pacing around my room. Come on, Silio, wake up! The nether portal is finally built! Follow me! As you all know, today is the day that we're going to put an end to the ghost pirate's tyranny. Once and for all, even though we'll have him ambushed, this will be a tough battle. But no matter what happens, we'll be okay. Half of us will attack the pirate, and the other half will stay here and guard our home. Is that clear? Yes! Work as a team and watch each other's back. Now let's go, boys. The nether portal is far away. We don't have time to waste. It wasn't long before we made it to the nether portal. And just as my dad had anticipated, out came the ghost pirate. What a fun little surprise. So you be the pathetic little rebels I've heard so much about. And you're on your way to kill me, eh? Each one of your souls will spend the rest of your eternity haunting the seven seas of me ship. I'll never let that happen. Attack, boys! <laughs> I watched as each one of the fire mobs attacked the ghost pirate, but stood no chance as the pirate easily killed each and every one of them. The ghost pirate then let out a massive blast of energy at my dad, turning him into a ghost immediately. No! Dad! Ah, you're the next little ones. The ghost pirate then sent his next blast out at me, but I managed to dodge it just in time. Over here, Silio, I found our escape. I quickly followed Sting into a hidden pathway, escaping another one of the ghost pirate's blasts in the nick of time. You may try to flee. But you can't hide forever. There be no force in this world who can stop me. And in the next 100 days, every last soul on this planet shall bend to be will. Day three came around and we realized that our village could be in danger. Sting, we have to check on our friends. They could be in serious danger. I agree. Let's go and check it out. Lucky for us, the ghost pirate was gone and the coast was clear. We started making our way back to our village, but it wasn't long before we heard an explosion and knew something was wrong. That didn't sound good. Let's be quick. As we approached our home, we found it destroyed and on fire with mobs running around frantically. That's when we saw what was causing this chaos. It was some sort of corrupted skeleton. We have to go and put an end to him before he puts an end to our home. Hey, you big bully. Get out of here before we teach you a lesson. You couldn't even leave me with a scratch. Anyways, you're lucky that I've harvested too many souls to handle for one day. Otherwise, you'd be a dead man standing. Now, out of my way before I change my mind. I've got to take these souls back to the ghost ship right now. The skeleton left our village as me and Sting looked in horror at our broken down home. Silio, we have to go and follow that skeleton. Our home is destroyed anyways. There's nothing left for us here. Let's go and avenge our dad. I agree. We followed the corrupted skeleton all the way to the nether portal from earlier and watched as he lit it up and stepped inside. Let's go after him, Sting. We stepped into the nether portal and were teleported into the overworld at the edge of the sea on day four. That's when I spotted the corrupted skeleton heading towards a massive ship. There he is. Let's go and get him. We've got to be super careful though because but Sting didn't listen and ran right up to the skeleton. This is for my dad. Sting ran up to the skeleton, but he was quickly overpowered. Silio, run away. He's way too powerful. I panicked and I didn't know what to do. So I just froze and watched as the corrupted skeleton killed Sting and turned him into a ghost, just like my father. You want to try your luck too, puny scorpion? Uh, uh. That's right. I didn't think so. I then watched as the corrupted skeleton boarded the ghost ship and watched it disappear into the darkness of the night. How could I have let this happen? I need to get my revenge and free my dad and brother. I didn't have time to process what had just happened. And just then, I heard a bunch of zombies and skeletons approach me. I thought I was done 
run for it. But just then, I felt a surge of power in my body. And that's when I transformed into a medium-sized scorpion. Not only did I gain six more hearts, but I also felt the flames in my tail heat up. And I shot out a blast of fire. Whoa, that was awesome. You're gonna regret trying to fight me, you stupid monsters. I started blasting them with my shots of fire for my stinger. Until each and every one of those mobs were dead. I then dug myself a hidey hole in the ground and decided to sleep for the night. I may not be strong enough yet, but one day I'm going to put an end to those pirates' terror and free each and every soul they've captured. I was aimlessly wandering around in the overworld on days 5 through 6 when I spotted a village nearby. I didn't want to go and try my luck unarmed though, so I quickly chopped down a tree to make myself a wooden pickaxe, after which I wasted no time and cut down some stone, using it to craft myself a full set of stone gear. As I was finishing crafting my tools, I was suddenly attacked by a massive bear. Time to show this big bully what I'm made of. I tried fighting it with my newly learned fire ability, but it didn't seem to be hurting it at all. The bear then started mauling me with its claws, and I knew it was time for me to escape. I tried running away, but the bear was catching up to me fast. But that's when an iron golem came to my protection and scared the bear away. Thanks for saving me. I would have been a goner if it wasn't for you. Not to worry. That is what I am here for, to keep peace here in this village. I turned around on day 7 through 10 and realized I had found myself in a small village with villagers all around. I went to introduce myself to the villagers, and they welcomed me with open arms. Maybe the overworld isn't so bad after all. Thanks for having me, guys. I'll be on my way. Just then, one of the younger villagers came up to me. Hey, Celio, why don't you move into this village? You could build a house right next to mine. You know what? I'll do it. It'll be nice having a community around me anyways. I started building my house overlooking the village. I made sure to make it super spacious in case I made any friends along the way who'd like to move in with me. I made sure to decorate the interior well, making it feel homely and reminding me of my home in the nether. I also made sure to fill it up with furnaces and a crafting table for later. After finishing up the house, I decided to add a massive stinger right next to my entrance to hopefully keep any wild bears away from my house. On days 11 through 14, I made my way out to look for some more resources to help expand my base. But that's when I heard a loud scream in the distance. I rushed towards the sound, and as I got closer, I saw another portal in the sky, under which there was a magma mushroom trying to run away from a vampire pirate. Oh, you're coming with me, you little scallywag. I had let so many of my friends and family get hurt, but this time, I was armed and would not let that happen again. Bring it on, you scurvy-ridden sea rats. I started engaging with the pirate, using my fire abilities to try and hurt it, but it didn't seem to be affecting him. Ugh, these pirates must have water powers to keep them safe from my fire attack. Oh well, I guess an old-fashioned sword duel it is. I struck the pirate with my sword, and it wasn't long before I had killed him. Thanks for saving me. I was trying to escape the nether for the ghost pirate's minions, but they followed me here to the overworld, and I thought I was done for. No worries. I'm always happy to help another fire mob out. How about you come stay with me? It'll be a lot safer than wandering out here on your own. Let's do it. But is there anything I can do to repay you? I owe you my life. Well, you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. It'll really help me take down the ghost pirates. I'm already on it. What's your name, by the way? I'm called Miles. Good to meet you, Miles. Now come on, let's head back home. We made it back to the village on days 15 through 17 and got right to work building Miles' own house. We worked on this project together, working hard to make it feel homely by giving it a mushroom-like appearance, but also making sure to add red accents to remind us of our home in the nether. Here you go, Miles. It's finally done. Awesome. I really appreciate it, Silvio. I didn't want to end the day quite yet, so I headed out in hopes of finding a couple of sheep to bring home with me using some wheat I had brought from the village. But on the way, I spotted a cave and saw something glistening on the inside. I went to go and check it out and realized I had finally found iron. I started mining as much of it as I could and it wasn't long before I had collected all of it. After leaving the cave, I spotted a field full of flowers nearby and saw that it had a bunch of sheep grazing on the grass. I quickly collected as many flowers as I found and then went up to the sheep and brought each one of them back home with me and then built an enclosure around them. After that, I made sure to fill up my furnaces with the iron I had found and then went to dye my sheep with the flowers I had found earlier. I'm going to be using these guys for a massive project I want to build later on, but I'll need a lot more wool for that. The furnaces had eventually smelted all my iron, so I used it to craft myself an iron helmet and boots, and even had enough left over for a whole set of iron tools. This should keep me safe from any other pirates I might encounter. I had had a really long day, so I decided to get some well-needed sleep. I didn't get to sleep for long, because on the night of days 18 through 22, I woke
woke up to a loud explosion. I went outside to look and saw that our village was ambushed by a bunch of pirates. Silio, please help us. The pirates killed our iron golem and now they're coming after us. I've got you covered. Go stay inside of my house till the coast is clear. I charged into battle using my new iron sword to slash through the pirates. This was a really tough battle and the villagers were starting to have many casualties too. Come on guys, we've got to work as a team. You guys go and grab some bows. I'll handle the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Working together with the villagers, we eventually managed to get the upper hand over the pirates and eventually kill them all. Just then, the young villager came up to me. Thank you for saving us, Silio. You're our hero. The young villager then took me to the village's library and introduced me to the village elder. Silio, I knew it was just a matter of time before I'd need to talk to you. The pirates have started attacking not only fire mobs, but other creatures too. Silio, please, can you stay here and protect us? We need your help. Why are they hurting innocent creatures? I'd love to help you, but I don't think I'm strong enough to battle the corrupted skeleton, let alone the ghost pirate. That's exactly why I brought you here. There's legends of an ancient fire creature that lives deep in one of the sacred caves on the side of a mountain nearby. He may be able to help you improve your fire powers and hurt those pirates even through their water auras. Thank you, Elder. I'll do my best to protect this village. Days 23 through 27 came around, and I knew I couldn't leave this village unprotected while I was gone, so I got right to work. Miles and I headed out together as much cobblestone as we could and used it to build a ton of walls which we placed around the entire village to hopefully keep any bad guys out. The pirates seemed to be very persistent though so we made sure to arm the village and its surrounding area with a bunch of booby traps. Satisfied with my progress, I decided to work on one more project before leaving. I crafted a pair of shears and then collected a bunch of red, orange, and yellow wool and got right to work on building a massive statue. I started working on the legs and since I had eight of them, this was no small task. After finishing off the eighth leg, I was out of wool and would have to halt building for now. Even though it's just a start, I'm really happy with the progress. I can't wait to finish the statue later on. After showing the statue to the villagers and Miles, I told Miles he'd be in charge of keeping our home safe while I was gone. I also gave him an extra iron sword I had crafted earlier, and I even armed the villagers with a bunch of stone swords too. I promise that the next time you see me, I'll be strong enough to face any mob that comes my way. On days 28 through 32, I was out looking for the sacred cave, when out of the corner of my eye, I I spotted something. I made my way closer and saw the corrupted skeleton talking to a bunch of his minions. And I saw a bunch of pirates roaming around the forest. Oh no, they must be here looking for the ancient fire creature too. I have to be really sneaky to not be caught. Just then, I saw a mystical butterfly brought to the skeleton by his minions. You tell me where that fire creature lives in an instant or else you're coming right aboard the ship with me. The butterfly didn't seem to give in to the skeleton though. And just then, he teleported out of the cage, nowhere to be seen. Go after that butterfly right now, and next time, put him in the magic seal cage. Oh no, the butterfly is in trouble. Hopefully he manages to find safety. I didn't have time to think about it though, as just then, it started raining, and it started damaging me a lot. Ah, I feel my flames running low. I need to find safety now. I ran as fast as I could, and hid in the first shelter I could find. I was on low health after that, but I was worried mobs might attack me at any time, so I quickly placed torches all around me. But that's when the room lit up, and there were cave paintings all around. This must be the fire creature's home. Days 35 through 39 came around and I headed deeper and deeper into the cave. There were bones scattered all throughout the cave and I got chills just walking past them. It wasn't long before I reached the end of the pathway and found a finely decorated doorway. I guess this is it. I opened the doors and took a step inside. It was pitch black and completely silent. Huh, maybe this isn't the right place after all. I took one more step forward, but that's when I touched a tripwire, which instantly locked me into an iron cage. Suddenly, I heard loud footsteps approaching me. Oh no, I must have fallen for that stupid pirate's trap. I'm done for. That's when a bright light turned on, which illuminated the massive cave I was trapped in. There were massive sculptures carved into the walls of the cave, which wowed me. But I didn't have time to process it, as just then, I heard loud footsteps approaching me. I readied up my stinger for whatever was to come. So this isn't a trap made by the pirates, is it? No, it's a trap I made for the pirates, in case they wanted to try their luck coming down here. That's so cool. I'd love to learn to build those one day. But that's not why I'm here. My dad, my brother, and many others have all been captured by the ghost pirates, and I need your help to become strong enough to kill him. I knew such a day might come. His troops have been getting closer and closer to finding my hideouts. We'll start our training tomorrow, but listen to me closely, little one. This will not be an easy task. I woke up early on days 40 through 44, ready to begin my training, but the lava creature was nowhere to be found. Uh, hello? Is anybody there? I'm kind of stuck here. I waited for him for what felt like hours, until finally I heard 
heard those loud footsteps approach me. Where on earth have you been? I've been waiting for hours. Huh? I've been wiping training all day. No, you big dummy. Now get me out of here. Huh. I wonder who I've been training then. There you go. Use your fireball. Oh well. Let's get straight to work then. We're behind schedule. The lava creature put me through a really strenuous training course. He did not go easy on me. First, we worked on my climbing abilities. I had no idea when I'd ever need them, but it was a cool skill, I guess. He then took me to a parkour course, but this one was over water. This is going to be a piece of cake. I fought off an entire army earlier. A couple of jumps will feel like nothing. I started blasting through the course with ease, until out of nowhere, the ground beneath me gave out, dropping me into freezing cold water. Ah, that's not fair. That water could have killed me. Then you shouldn't have fallen, should you? <laughs> huh. I trained all through the night and even spent days 45 through 50 trying to master the course. It took me way too long, but I eventually completed it. Looks like you're ready to take on your final task, which is for you to conquer the seven seas. Uh, are you sure that's smart? Even in the safety of a boat, if that thing breaks, I'm done for. This is what it takes. You must conquer your fear if you want to unlock your true potential. Well, if you say so. Good. There is a chest far out on an island in the ocean. I want you to retrieve the contents of it and bring them back to me. I did as he wished and crafted myself a boat and started my adventure. It wasn't long though till the waves started rising and I felt a storm coming my way. The waves started crashing down on me and this was it. Luckily, it wasn't that long till I saw a patch of land in the distance and I rode my way to it. I was washed out on the shore, but that's when I realized something. The island I washed out on had a massive red X in the center of it. I guess this is it. I started digging downwards and it wasn't long till I found a chest. I tried opening it, but it's locked. That's when I heard the loud crash of waves hit my island, so I went to go and check it out. Another traveler trying to retrieve the fire creature's treasure? You'll have to kill me for it. Uh, another traveler? You mean there's been more like me here? Oh, no. You must be the 27th victim so far. Prepare to die. The sea monster started approaching me, so I tried blasting it with my fire abilities. And to my surprise, they actually seemed to hurt it. Your fire may burn hotter than the previous travelers, but let's see how you handle this tidal wave. The sea monster started blasting me with water attacks, but thanks to my training with the fire creature, I was able to dodge them with ease. Huh, I guess the agility course paid off after all. Ugh. Or not. The sea monster was really tough, and the battle could have gone either way. But with a couple swift moves, I finally managed to kill it, collecting the key it left behind. Yes! Now let's go and see whatever amazing rewards are hidden in that chest. I went to open it up, and inside of it, I found a painting? There's no way the fire creature made me do all that just for a painting. I'm gonna kill him when I get back. I started making my way to the fire creature's cave on days 51 through 57, when I noticed something in the distance. It was the ghost pirate's ship, docked next to a small island with a tower on it. I need to go and check it out. I got closer and closer, and that's when I saw the ghost pirate and the corrupted skeleton talking. I couldn't get close enough to hear anything, but I saw the skeleton give the pirate some sort of shiny rock. That can't be a good thing. I need to come pay this place a visit later. I find I finally made it back to the fire creature's cave, and I was not happy. What on earth was that all about? You sent me on a mission that killed tons of your past apprentices, and all that for this stupid painting? I threw it at him, angry at him for putting my life at risk for no reason, and then started making my way out of the cave. Silio, wait, come back. Ah, uh, what is it? Look how well this painting fits my dining hall. I should have never wasted my time on you. Silio, I'm kidding. Follow me. I reluctantly followed the fire creature down a steep pathway. If this is another joke, I promise to you only one of us will leave this room in one piece. He led me into a massive room, which had a deep pit of lava in the center. The reason I put you through all that training is to test your abilities and see if you'd be strong enough to withstand the heat of lava. And I think you're ready. Uh, why? Why would I want to waste my time taking a bath? I have a world to save. It is your choice whether you like to bathe in the lava or not. But if you choose to do so, you will transform into a being way stronger than you are now. But I warn you, this change is irreversible. I'll do whatever it takes. Be my guest. I got closer to the lava and felt the scorching heat of it hit my body. That's really hot, even for a fire mob. I gathered all my courage and jumped into the lava. To my surprise, it started burning me up and I was taking damage. 
I tried to swim out of it, but I was immobilized. Cilio, trust the lava. I was getting low on health and expected the worst as I got fully covered in lava. But to my surprise, I didn't die as I was left with just one heart. That's when I felt my health bar increase by 12 hearts. And as I jumped out of the lava, I grew into a massive fire scorpion, unlocking a new fire ability. I was now able to shoot massive blasts of fire from my tail. And my hits now set enemies on fire. Thank you so much for all your help. I promise to take the ghost pirate down for all of us. Good. Now be fast. I fear time is not on our side. I started making my way back home on days 58 through 62 when a storm brewed up at sea. I didn't want to go and challenge the corrupted skeleton yet, but at this point, I didn't have a choice. My flames were burning weaker and weaker each second, so I found cover in the only place possible, the skeleton's tower. I quietly stepped inside, and as I looked around, I saw cages filled with the restless souls of creatures the skeleton had killed. Each of the cages seemed to be named to show the date of their capture, and which mob they used to be. Wait, could this mean that Sting is somewhere here in these cages? Arr, it sure does, including each and every one of the pathetic mothers whose souls I've captured and brought here. This is your final warning. Let these poor souls free, or I'll have to deal with you myself. Ye be as slow-witted as a barnacle on a ship's hull. Ye have no room to negotiate with me. In just a moment, you'll be just another soul in my collection. The corrupted skeleton charged at me, striking me with a flurry of hits from each of his four arms. Ah! Ow! Oh. Never let you win! Let's see how you like my fire blasts! The corrupted skeleton seemed completely unfazed by my warnings, but that was his downfall. Just one of my newly powered up fire blasts hit him straight in his chest, and that's when something inside of him seemed to change, and a bunch of particles started exiting his body! Oh, what just happened? Where am I? At first, I thought he was faking it, but I could sense the spirits in the room calm down too. The last thing I remember is the ghost pirate knocking me out, and I woke up in a room full of witches who made me drink some disgusting potion, and here I am. I decided not to let him know what happened to protect his sanity. Hey, how about after helping me break out these souls, you come home with me, and we'll talk tomorrow. We broke free each soul from their cage, and to my dismay, my brother or dad weren't anywhere to be found. They may not have been kept here, but I will not stop until the ghost pirate is dead. I made it back to my village with the no longer corrupted skeleton and souls on day 63 through 68, and got right to work building them their very own section in the village. I made sure to build these houses massive, and in case I found any other souls that were in danger of being taken on board the ghost pirate's ship. I was really happy with how the houses turned out, and it seemed like the skeleton and souls liked their new home too. Thanks for building this home for us. This place feels impenetrable from the ghost pirate's rule. Speaking of the ghost pirate, what do you know about him? It's coming back to me now. I'm so sorry for everything I've done, all those innocent creatures I hurt. I guess I can't take back the past, but hopefully I can at least help you out. Please, tell me everything you know. The ghost pirate ship is constantly roaming the seas, so you won't be able to find him unless he lets you. But at your current states, I don't think you'll have much of a chance fighting him. However, he is weak to a certain material found in the nether, but I fail to recall its name. If you do manage to find it, however, and craft a sword out of it, you should be able to penetrate his armor and stand a chance against him. Thanks for the help, and for the record, I don't hold what happened against you when you were possessed. I appreciate it, Silio. Is there anything I can do to repay you? There is! You can hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll need all the help I can get to beat the evil ghost pirate. I sure will. I was really exhausted after our conversation and went right to sleep, and I was so tired that I slept through all of day 69, and in my sleep, I had a nightmare that I was approached by the ghost pirate. Congratulations on taking down my strongest commander, you little bug. Very impressive. Too bad he was just another pawn of mine. You can have him. I was planning on killing him soon enough anyways, as his job for me was already done. I'm only a few souls away from having enough manpower to torment the Seven Seas for eternity, torturing each and every one of my new crewmates along the way. But why are you doing this? What could us strangers possibly have done to cause you to want to hurt so many innocent beings? Ever since I was a child, I was never accepted by the overworld mobs. My skeleton friends would throw me into the freezing pool water and laugh at me as I tried making it back to shore. Then not a single soul on Earth was there to help me. Maybe if I was shown a little more empathy, I wouldn't be like this. But now you've brought it on yourself. Everybody will face my torment for the rest of eternity, just like I felt tormented my whole life!
The ghost pirate then lunged at me, and I woke up in a cold sweat. I feel so bad for the ghost pirate, but there's never any excuse for hurting innocent creatures. I'm going to take him out once and for all. I woke up early on day 70 through 74 when I was approached by Miles. Hey there, long time no see, Miles. How are you? I'm great, Cilio, and our sheep are doing even better. Go check out what they left you. I followed Miles to our sheep farm and found that they had left a massive pile of wool for me to collect. Thanks, guys. I know exactly what to do with this. I got right to work resuming building my statue, this time working on the body, making sure to make it absolutely massive. As a sign to the ghost pirate that this will be a site of resistance against his reign, I eventually ran out of wool, but I was really happy with the progress I had made and was excited to finish it off later. The young villager then came up to me with a message. The big skeleton wants to see you. I listened to the villager and headed right to the skeleton's house where I was greeted by a happy looking skeleton. Cilio, last night I couldn't fall asleep and that's when my memories started coming back to me. I remember now visiting the nether with the ghost pirate, and I remember where he mentioned the ore might be kept. It should be located in one of the bastion remnants near this nether portal I built last night, but be fast, Tilio. I fear he may have already collected everything that's left. I'm on it! Oh, and hey, before you go, take this. The skeleton handed me a diamond pickaxe for my journey. Whoa! Thanks so much! I'll be back soon. I hopped right into the nether portal and spawned into the nether on day 75 through 81. Oh, wow! Now this feels amazing! I could get used to heat like this. It wasn't long before I heard a massive explosion nearby and had to go and check it out. I quickly made my way to the sound and found a bastion remnant being raided by a group of pirates. I ran inside to try and help the piglins, but before I had time to help out, they had already killed each and every one of them. That's when I spotted in the center of the remnant a massive pile of netherite, but it didn't look like I was the only one who spotted it, as I realized the pirates caught onto the ore too. They started scurrying towards it, and I knew I had to do something. Hey, you swash buckling rapscallions, if you want to try and mine that ore, you'll have to get through me first. The pirates didn't seem to be faced by my presence, and headed right towards the netherite. Well, if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. I charged at the pirates, making sure to use a combination of my fire powers and my strength and agility for my training to fight each and every one of the pirates. I eventually killed them all, hopefully leaving the ghost pirate with a message to not underestimate the power of a fire scorpion ever again. I then made myself to the netherite, and started mining it all with the pickaxe the skeleton gave me. This is it. I'm getting closer and closer to defeating the ghost pirate. I better go back home and tell my friends about this adventure. I started making my way back to the nether portal and hopped in as soon as I got there. I spawned back in the overworld on days 82 through 86, but I instantly noticed something was wrong. I heard fire burning outside, and it wasn't long before I heard an explosion and villagers scream. I rushed out instantly to see what was going on, and that's when I saw the ghost pirate at the village and a bunch of pirates around the base. What are you doing here? Where are my friends? That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. Pirates, get out! I charged at the pirates, trying to fight them all off, all while looking for any signs of my friends. Ugh, there's so many of you! Where do you keep coming from? Just then, I heard the ghost pirate's evil chuckle, and I turned to look at him and saw him holding the young villager. Look what we have here. Let this be your final warning, Cilio. Try anything more, and this won't be the last one of your friends I kill. The ghost pirate didn't hesitate and killed the youngling right in front of my eyes. No! Why would you do that? But he didn't answer and left the village destroyed as he made his way back to his ship. Guys, please, is anybody still alive? That's when I heard cuffing from one of my walls that had collapsed. I went to check it out and found Miles and the skeleton still alive. Here, guys, I'll get you out of there. I'm so sorry, Cilio. We tried to fight back, but we were overpowered. I'm afraid he's become even stronger than before. Cilio, I don't... I don't think your newly acquired netherites alone will be enough to kill him, even with the diamond sword I wanted to give you. You need to truly master the art of the sword if you want to stand a chance at fighting the ghost pirate. I need you to head deep underground to find his brother, the tentacle pirate. The ghost pirate banished him underground hundreds of years ago. The tentacle pirate knows him best. He will know what to do. But you need to head down there soon, and I fear it won't be long till we're all aboard his ghost ship for the rest of eternity. Days 87 through 93 came around faster than I would have liked. I knew I had no time to waste, so I got right to work. I wanted to start the day off by finishing off my fire scorpion statue, and I was really happy with how it turned out. I think this is one of my best statues so far, almost as good as the statue I built when I spent 100 days as a lizard. You should definitely go and watch that video next. This statue will also be a symbol for the ghost pirate to show that I won't let myself be bullied around by him. I also made sure to
to completely reinforce the walls around the village with tall stone walls, so that at the very least, I could buy time from the ghost pirate's attacks. I also didn't take the skeleton's advice lightly, so I headed deep underground, hoping to gain some sort of upper hand over the ghost pirates. I was underground for a while when I realized something. I have no clue where this tentacle guy is staying. How will I ever find him? Just then, I stepped on a frail part of the cave and fell right through, hitting the ground hard. Ugh, I must have dropped from really high. Wait. Where am I? I looked around and saw a massive sculpture in the middle of the open space I found. That's when I heard loud footsteps approaching, and I was ready for the worst. But just then, I saw a pirate approach me. But this one looked like he had been out of action for a while. Looks like my brother sent another one of his filthy land-loving minions to try and kill me. Good luck trying, kid. I've handled tougher than you. No! I'm here for your help! I need you to help me kill him! I'm on your side! I see. How do I know I can trust you, though? I spent days 94 through 99 explaining my situation to the tentacle pirate, and he eventually agreed to help me out. It sounds like we're low on time. I wish I'd have time to train you, but we're in a hurry. Hold the stone and head right under the statue. Nothing's happening. Are you sure I'm doing this right? That's when the stone I was holding suddenly started glowing, and out of nowhere, I grew into a mutant scorpion with 12 more hearts. My sword had also fused with the netherite, and not only that, but it had become enchanted too, with smite six? I didn't think that was possible, but I'll definitely need it to fight the ghost pirate. Thanks for your help. The tentacle pirate started answering, but I felt a sharp pain in my head suddenly take over, and I lost consciousness. That's when I saw a vision. It was of the ghost pirate. He looked even bigger and stronger than before, and it didn't take me long to realize where he was. He was at my scorpion statue, and he did not seem happy. I snapped out of the vision, and knew this was it. I thanked the pirate for his help, and headed right back up to the overworld to face the ghost pirate for one last time. I finally made it up to the surface on day 100, and I was just on time. As soon as I made it back home, I saw the walls of my home quickly get destroyed without any sense of struggle, and saw the ghost pirate enter my base. I rushed inside and saw that he had cornered my friends and was advancing towards them. I didn't have a second to waste, so I charged up my scorpion tail and launched a powerful fireball at him. It didn't seem to hurt too much, but it was definitely enough to get his attention. What did I tell you about messing with me, you silly arthropod? Your fire powers can't even burn through me coats, let alone me Buddy, I was going to kill your friends quickly and spare them the pain, but after I'm done with you, I'll make sure they suffer. Bring it on, you lousy excuse of a buccaneer. I charged right at the ghost pirate, knowing that this was going to be a tough battle. I was evading his shots well, and my new sword was clearly cutting deep into the ghost pirate's body, but it wasn't long until he struck me hard with his sword. What? How did you survive my hits? I see. My brother must have given you a new set of armor, but that is a no importance. You'll be dead soon enough either way. Wait, what? I checked out my inventory, and it turned out I was wearing a brand new set of epic armor. If that's how much damage I took with this armor, I wonder if I'd even be alive with my previous gear. I didn't have time to think though, as the ghost pirate started blasting me with his laser beams, which did a lot of damage. Ugh. How is this even fair? I ran up to the ghost pirate, charging up one last hit, but that's when he evaded my attack and knocked me against a wall, stunning me and leaving me immobilized. Ugh. Like countless foes before you, you two succumb to the irresistible might of my wrath. The ghost pirate powered up and shot one last blast at me. But just before it hit me, the skeleton jumped in the way of the shot, absorbing all the damage and leaving me unscathed. Silio, this is for you. Finish this battle for all of us. Those were the final words the skeleton let out before he too turned into a ghost. Now what? Your puny little friends got killed. Now who's going to save you? Gotta be me, brother. Out of nowhere, the tentacle pirate struck at his brother, and they engaged in a tough fight. It could have gone either way, and even though I was low on health, I knew I had to do something. This is for my family. I rushed at the ghost pirate, hitting it with one final blow to the back of its head, finally killing it. That's when suddenly ghosts started appearing from out of nowhere, until I was completely surrounded by them. I noticed that the ghost pirates had dropped the stone the corrupted skeleton had given him earlier, so I picked it up, and the stone started glowing. And that's when, one by one, each ghost transformed back into their mortal state. I had done it. I always knew you had it in you, Cilio. Thank you for everything.